Diane, your perspective on whether he was dovish enough from your perspective. You know, what was really interesting was this very issue about asset purchases and how loose, I mean, it was the least possible guidance the Fed could offer in terms of asset purchases going forward. And I think Mike gets to the heart of the matter, and that is the Fed doesn't know how it's going to extricate itself from these purchases going <clears throat> forward. And there's yep. clearly, we're going to see from the minute, some very colorful debate, um, and I think heated debate in terms of where the Fed actually goes on those asset purchases. You really saw the Fed chairman be extremely uncomfortable comfortable talking about that in a way that you could see that he wasn't in full agreement. There was a lot of dissonance, I think, at this meeting regarding asset purchases, maturities, what does the Fed do, and then how do they get out of it later on? Because they've not proven, as Mike <clears throat> so noted, that they can get out of the balance sheet issues once they get into them. Even if they were to reduce the purchases, that could be something that could roil financial markets and credit markets in particular. So I think that's important. What was also interesting was the flip side of this was when he was talking about climate change and how comfortable he was. I, I mean, this was the most uncomfortable I saw the Fed chairman and the most comfortable as he talked about, listen, hey, you know, climate change is an emerging risk that we know will hit bank balance sheets and we have to join the rest of the world and Congress can decide what it wants to do, but that is part of our mandate. I thought that was fairly strong. And the one last point I'd make is, you know, when have we heard a Fed chairman be as empathetic as Fed chairman Powell is about how hard it is on those households that are bearing the brunt of the pain from COVID-19. And I think the and the economic losses, really, when he talks about that, he clearly is much more worried about the long-term scarring effects than some of his colleagues who now see more optimism with the vaccine.